This is Dan, and I'm Kyle, and uh, we're going to spend the next hour or so answering your home buying questions. So feel free to leave those um, in the chat, and we'd love to help you out with uh, whether it's mortgages, questions about interest rates, uh, how to buy a home, questions about homes, the whole deal, what's going on in the economy. Uh, we would love to help. So Dan has a channel called The Rate Update, um, where he talks about like economic updates, what's going on with uh, interest rates, what's going on with home prices. So Dan, do you want to give us a, a quick little update on what's going on so economically? Here, yep, let's talk what's in the news. So the big thing you're going to see in all the mainstream media is President Biden. He's increasing the, the costs for people with really good credit when they're buying a house. So let's just say fact or fiction. I'll say fact. Um, so what happens is he appoints people to oversee kind of the committees that oversee mortgages and everything else. They now are redistributing, um, let's say, put it this way, they're raising rates or costs for loans on people, about 720 to 740 credit scores, and those putting down at about 15 to 20%. It's going to cost them about 1% of the loan amount more in kind of fees. Uh, that, that's basically the whole bottom line there. So is it going to really affect a ton of people? Not really, because there's a little bit of workarounds there. But is, is that news fact or fiction? It is fact. Um, so and then other pieces of the news. Uh, rates are staying stable right now. The markets are, you know, based on even the stock markets, it's just based on tech news. So there's not that much coming, uh, you know, coming up right now, but later in the week and in the next week or two coming up, you're going to have Fed meetings and a whole bunch of other stuff hitting the markets. So be prepared for all that. It'll be turmoil again. Okay. I will one little pushback. I feel like everyone keeps saying Biden, but this is not like a Biden thing. This is just the FHFA. <laughs> And everyone's right. like it's using it. <laughs> so here's here's why I say that. And I'm not being I'm not trying to be political. I looked this up because that's the first thing I, I said. I'm like he doesn't he appoints the head of the FHFA. It was appointed uh, I, it, on, okay. on June 22nd of 2022. He appointed, I think, Loretta Jackson or something like I apologize. That's probably not the name uh, to that position. And then they're the ones that OK and, you know, push this agenda forward so gotcha unfortunately he, that the person who put the stamp on it is an appointee of the current president if you like him or not gotcha. that's just that's the truth behind it For so the, reason, my, my like, point video quality is terrible this oh, on, on, on all over the places president biden is this and that he he probably doesn't even really know what's going on with any of this but he's in the position and he appointed that person and yes it is you know, it's, it's pushing up costs and just rearranging some of the cost structures of loans. So is it really huge? Not really. But uh, overall, you know, the, the, the point is it's, it's a factual statement. Uh, can you take over questions for a second? There's like a pounding going on outside my house that I need to figure out what's happening. You betcha. I can't really see the okay. questions. So let me, I'll just continue to talk about the uh, economic uh, news. And that's what I do on my channel, folks. So my name is Dan Free. I do the rate update. Kyle and I work together, actually. Uh, I recruited him about a year ago to, to join our team because we, we're all over YouTube. So if you guys are out there and you're any you're YouTubers and you'd like to set you know some appointments up with us and uh, talk to us about it, please do so. But just to, uh, we, we come here each week to answer your questions. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background about who we are while we wait for Kyle to come on and, and bring up those questions again is... We are actually a federally chartered. We're, we work at a federally a federal bank. Okay, what that means for you guys is basically, you can work with us anywhere in the whole country. So we work in all fifty states as well as Puerto Rico. Um, but the unique thing about what we do is instead of you going to your you know your bank where you usually think you know I got checking savings and all this, we're we're not only that, but we're one of the country's largest mortgage brokerages. Okay, so that's one thing people don't know. So you can come to us. We can try to place you at our bank, and if not, if there's a better rate, bank, a better rate at a bank out there, or some better programs out there, we're probably set up with that bank that we can also reciprocate their rates and their programs with you. That's what we do for people all over the country. So, Kyle, when you left, I can't bring up the questions. I'm oh, on, okay. I'm on no worries. Phone. So, everything okay? For some reason, my my vi yeah, my video quality is like terrible. I have no clue what's going on. Um, you ever see the movie Scream? Uh, no. 
Oh, okay. Never mind then. But, Just don't look out your window. <laughs> and if you okay. see somebody outside right. with a mask on, you got yeah, problems. I have no I have no clue what that sound was. It was weird. Um, okay, Sean V said, I always miss the lives, but I really want to know if it's normal that I received a pre-approval for 150000 um, and then a pre-qualification for two sixty five using the same documents. So sometimes what happens in there is, you know, each lender is not going to come up with the same number um, because the, the amount that you're approved for isn't like one fixed number. There's not like a math formula and it's like exactly one number. Um, it kind of is floating a little bit because it's all based on underwriting software that gives you an approval. And so if a loan officer keeps running your file, running your file, running your file through the underwriting software, it can trigger like a red flag on your file. So usually what's going to happen is you're going to tell your loan officer, hey, I want to look in this price range. And they're likely going to try to approve you for more, slightly more than that uh, amount. Okay. They might go a bunch more or just a little bit more. It really just depends. So likely uh, somewhere in the communication where you were talking with these mortgage companies, you may not have clarified exactly what you were looking for. So the first lender might've just run it at 150. If you said, hey, I just want to see what I can get. They ran it at 150 and the next company said 265. It's likely if you went back to the first company and you're saying, hey, I want an approval at 265, they could give you one at 265. So there's no magic thing. Different companies don't have like different higher approvals all of a sudden. Um, it's probably just a miscommunication in what you were looking for because it's really difficult for a loan officer to pin a, that exact number without continuously submitting things into the underwriting software, which causes some uh, problems down the road. And we have Robin. Hey, Robin. Hello, Robin. Uh, T. Alford uh, said, is it hard to buy a home at retirement with excellent credit? You want to take that, Dan? No. It's, a, you know, basically the, the criteria to buy a house, if you have excellent credit, well, you already passed that. Um, you probably, if you're retired, you probably have somewhat of a nest egg. So you probably have the down payment for your, the down payment of the home. So now we just have to analyze it. Does your income support the, the amount of, you know, house you're looking to buy. And we can go through different programs with you. You know, are you a veteran? Very good criteria there. Very good rates. No PMI, 100% financing, fantastic product, great credit. You want to put a bunch of money down, probably look at a conventional loan. So there's a whole bunch of options for you. That's why we always set up consultations with you guys. And just so you guys know, you don't have to set up a consultation. If you're like, you go on there and it's like, okay, uh, I just have a question now, call us. And we have an 800 number, so you can call anywhere in the country, and it'll come up. And we got people, mostly all th even all through the night, trying to answer those questions for you guys. Um, let's see. Xavier said, uh, good evening, Kyle and David. Uh, well, this is Dan. <laughs> uh, I got a brother, David. Let's see. Uh, you got a bird? I got a brother, David. Oh, a brother. A brother. Uh, thank you guys. I closed on my house on April 10th without you guys knowledge and guidance. I don't know what I've been able uh, to buy my first home. Thank you. Well, we're glad to help. I'm glad that the, uh, the info was helpful for you. You've given us a shout out. Thank you for, you know, coming back. Uh, Bobby Bo said, Kyle and Dan, five stars. China's hacking. Yeah, I have no clue what's going on with the video. It's weird. Um, Digo, hello from Southwest side of Chicago. Uh, Midway area. Is that close to you, Dan? Where is it? What is it? Uh, Midway area. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Within an hour. Uh, so the market's very competitive in my area. I've submitted offers on about five different homes in the last week, and they all had five plus offers. Um, that's my oh, it looks like Diego is a realtor. So that's my point when you see a lot of the, you know, people talking about the markets crashing and it's a, you know, it's a, uh, you know everything. You just, you just reiterated the facts behind everything that we kind of preach all the time. It's like, guys, look at your local areas. Yes, there's some areas out there that are, are bad, you know, and they're because they're way overvalued um, and they're going to they're going to tumble. But there's, you know, huge parts of the country that has, still has competitive pricing and people multi bids on properties. So the world isn't crashing folks. Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched any like housing crash videos recently. I'm very curious what's, uh, what's going on <laughs> in the housing crash world. 
Um, Nathan said, uh, does your company offer a construction loan products? Dan, you want to take that? You, I'll say no. And here's why. Uh, we're probably, we, we do offer them. I'm not going to be your most competitive uh, person to do those. That's, we don't specialize in the construction part. Uh, there, it's a really lengthy process. There's a lot of time and, in, in, you know, everything's involved. Um, and you need basically a separate department to do that. And we're just, we're not set up to do those. Uh, but there are a ton of lenders out there that do those. Um, if you want, just email me, uh, dan at the rateupdate.com and i'd love to send you over to I, I might even have a couple just lenders directly you can reach out to and love to connect you guys cool. um robin wills how long should underwriting typically take uh, a new construction home should be done in july and i'm wondering how long before i should expect an actual approval so far we've only been pre-qualified um so usually once your loan officer submits your documents into the underwriter you're probably going to hear back within two days um, it's very quick. So normally what's going to happen is they're going to take whatever info or documents they have right now, give them to the underwriter. Normally you're going to hear back with an initial approval um, called like a conditional approval within around 48 hours. Um, from there, it's very common for the underwriter to say, hey, we need an extra uh, page of bank statements. We need, you know, maybe a couple other things. That's perfectly normal. Um, then from there, it's really just going to see how long does it take you to get those documents. Some people wait weeks <laughs> to send those documents in. I would suggest doing it as quickly as possible. Um, the quicker you get those documents in, the quicker the process takes. So underwriting really goes pretty quick. And then it normally takes them around a day or two to review any new documents that you send in. Um, Jonathan said, can you qualify for a home loan even if you have collections? You want to take that? Yeah, sure. We can, you, your mic's starting to cut in and out just a little bit. Um, God, I'm going to be rebooting. So can you qualify with collections? Yes. Here's what I'm going to beg and plead with you. This is the probably one of the first videos I ever did was in regards to collections. And the reason being is I would have borrower after borrower after borrower come in and say, you know, my credit's bad, but I just paid off a bunch of collections and they should be shooting up any time now. So we'd wait 30 days, we'd pull their credit and their credit scores would plummet further than where they were. The reason being is they paid off their collections. So let me make this real quick. There might be other people out here with collection questions. If you have, if you're working on it, trying to get a mortgage, please work with your loan officer with this. Make sure you work with a knowledgeable loan officer that tells you this and please, if they don't, then educate them on something. How the credit reports read your collection, it reads basically two or three things of data. It reads the, you know, the, it is a collection account. It rates it as a nine, it codes it as a nine, and then it gives you the last active date, okay? The, the, the loan amount, the balance, anything else, nothing is relevant. It could be a million dollars or a dollar. The, the effect is the same. So the last active date is really what you wanna be concerned about. If the last active date is, you know, if, that, if the date keeps following you month after month after month, then call the collection company and see if you can settle and settle for deletion. But if that collection account reads, let's say right now it reads July of 2017, don't do a thing. Because if you pay it, the only thing that's going to change on your report is the date of last activity is going to take it from 2017 to current, even though it's paid off. Because remember, I said the balance doesn't matter. Now the balance, all that happened is turned to zero but the date changed. You just shot yourself in the foot. So yes, you can get a loan with uh, collections, but be very careful during that process. Yep. Sorry, I know um, that was... Oh, no, that's good. Uh, Robin said, hi, by the way, uh, you two and your knowledge is awesome. Well, thanks, Robin. Thanks for uh, Thank being here and asking some questions. Um, and Waldo said, thanks, uh, David, for helping me. He works with, uh, uh, he works with you and we're picking out the house okay. now. Yeah. Um, yeah, David's on our team and fantastic. And if you'd like to, you know, we probably we probably should actually tell people where to go if they want to schedule like a free consult yeah. <laughs> at some point. Um, so you can go to winthehouseyoulove.com and uh, on there is going to be an option to go ahead and schedule a call. Um, so if you, like Dan mentioned before, if you want to look at getting a pre-approval, if you just have questions, you want to take a look at numbers, if you're at that spot where you're ready to start looking to buy a house, but you don't know where to begin, just set up a free consultation call with us. 
We have mortgage advisors who can work in all throughout the U.S., um, and we'd love to be able to help you. Uh, Gina said, uh, thank you for your tremendously helpful videos. After three years being on the sidelines, I'm under contract to close mid-May. Uh, it's a dream come true. That's awesome. Oh, good for you. Congrats, Gina. Uh, Andrew said, uh, do you think now is a good time to buy a new construction in NorCal where supply is low and rates are likely to decrease later this year when closing will occur? Um, so is now a good time to buy a new construction? Dan, what do you think? Our, our philosophy is this. Um, now is, I hate to say it, I'm not saying it's irrelevant, but are you ready? Okay, and, and like Kyle has this these rules. And basically in a nutshell is, do you have the money set aside for the down payment? Do you have money set aside for some reserves? Can you afford the payment the way it is today? If all that is basically yes, 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 then if you feel it's the time, yes. The data that you're giving me, if I would put that, compile that data together and say, yes, it's an, it, the market is still booming in that area, you're not gonna have a lot of the existing home sales, meaning people selling their current home they're in. So you're relying on just construction basically right now. And I'm going to have to agree with you. I'm on the, on the bandwagon. I think at the end of the year, well, Q3, Q4 this year, right? You're going to see rates start coming back down. So you might have timed this pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, Gaming Entertainment said, I have a few collections, but my credit is 570. Um, but I talked to a lender and they say they can't help me. Um, why I have 20% down and I have the income. Um, so when it comes to collections, it's not just as straightforward as do you have them? Do you not have them? And then you qualify. Um, it really can be a little bit more nuanced than that. And it, it comes down to the underwriting software that we're looking at. And then also if the underwriting software says no, and we're going with what's called a manual underwrite, um, where it's more of a, a human looking at the file, um, or looking at your loan application more closely, there are additional rules on top of it. And so um, what I would do is I would go back to that loan officer and say, hey, can you tell me exactly why? What's causing me to not be able to get approved? Um, I think is going to be the best thing to help you spot what's not working uh, in that situation. Can I chime in one second? Yes, you can. Here's what happened. That's a great question to bring up, especially right now. We just we closed today, I think, our third loan this month that was manual underwrites. Here's the reason why I bring that up. We had to go, one of them, I know we had to go to four different lenders to find, to get an approval on a manual underwrite. Because you hit it on the button. A lot of it is there is guidelines, but it's also, are, are you willing to write your name on that approval or not? Because these underwriters are graded on their delinquency levels and so forth. So some are a little looser than others. So it took us four lenders to get a manual underwrite approved. So don't give up hope. And if, if you'd like, just please schedule with us. We'd love to help you. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Celeste said, looking to buy my first home in North Carolina, uh, moving from Delaware. Um, what's the most amount of grants can one get? And what's the most you have seen people get in terms of grants toward down payment and closing? You want to take that? Yep. There are... Here's the, there's a bunch of different grant programs, okay? A lot of them are smoke and mirrors. And here's what I mean by that. They'll give you, let's say they'll give you $3,500 uh, toward your closing costs or your down payment. So, but then the application for that grant might be 1,200 bucks, okay? And then you might have lender fees because to get into that program, you have to have a specific lender. Their fees are gonna be another 1,200 bucks. So you got 3,500 bucks, it cost you $2,400, so you, you actually netted 1100 bucks. That's most of the programs out there. There are other ones that are fantastic, like we have ones that are forgivable. So basically, when you walk out of the closing, it's free money. Uh, they range from 3.5% to 5%. Is there a 7% one? Do you know? Um, not that I'm familiar with. The Empower one. I think on power goes three and a half and 5%, but you can get up to the 5%. Uh, and that's a fantastic program. There's no strings attached. You walk out of the closing and you don't owe the money. That's where we usually guide our, our borrowers to. 
Uh, Sunny asked, uh, when should lenders disclose their fees? Um, so normally you're going to see this when you get a pre-approval that's going to have a quote as well. So you should be seeing like your monthly payment with a breakdown, what's inside principal, interest, taxes, homeowners insurance, any private mortgage insurance, any estimated HOA costs, depending on where you're looking at, um, along with your interest rate, your APR and a list of closing costs. So these are going to be, uh, your down payment plus the lender's fee, plus any third party fees. Think Taxes, recording fees, appraisal, title insurance, homeowner's insurance, all of that will be listed when you get uh, pre-approved. Um, Catherine, you asked, uh, I would like to purchase a home as a first-time home buyer and want to use down payment assistance. How, do how long does it take to receive assistance? And is that something you can help with? Um, yes, so that's just like Dan mentioned, uh, a couple programs that we have. Um, and the assistance is just part of the loan approval. So it's not like a, an extra step that you have to take. It's just included um, in the loan itself. Uh, veteran Mortgage Broker said, hi from KC. Uh, hello. Um, Dami said, we would like to build on our property. Cool. Uh, if you have a question, let us know. <laughs> um Let's see, Luis Gonzalez, uh, if I'm about to get a raise at work, how long should I wait before I get a pre-approval submitted? You wanna take that? Sure. You, well, we would, here's what would go through. You could probably get it through with a letter stating the raise and when it started or when it starts, as long as the start date is prior to the closing. To be safe, I would, if you got your first check along with that letter, you're, you should have no problems at all. You should be good to go. Um, Denise said, have you heard about the loan level price adjustment change? Yeah, so we were talking about that earlier. Dan and I both have videos coming out on that. Um, it's not quite, everyone's, the home buying world right now is very, let me use negative spins yeah. on things to get your attention. And if people can make you angry, they can control you. And so that's that's what's happening exactly with this. Uh, loan level price adjustments have existed for years and basically they're just fees added, uh, based on your down payment and your credit score. And you don't actually pay it as an upfront cost. It's part of your interest rate. So when you say 1.75, your interest rate is not increasing 1.75%. For people who have above a 680 credit score, it's going to increase around an eighth to a quarter of a point. For people with lower credit scores, it's going to get better by an eighth to a quarter of a point, like or percentage rate, not 1.75, like 0.25 is the difference that you're going to see here. And really what I think people are kind of, um, I feel like people are being a little uh, exaggerating because ultimately what was happening um, is they're just reallocating the change. If loan level price adjustments came out from the very beginning, get go, like they are right now, nobody would have complained about them. The only difference is that they're changing the structure a little bit to even the playing field, where it used to be a little lopsided, where low credit score people had to pay a lot of money and high credit score people did not have to pay a lot of money. All they're doing is doing this, not this. <laughs> they're doing this, uh, but people are using it with a negative spin to try to get your attention. So just be careful of that. That's not what's happening. Um, and people who are having these aggressive spins are not actually showing you what's going on, um, or at least they're not doing it completely honestly. Uh, Jose said, hello guys, uh, from the city of champions, Boston, Massachusetts. My question is, do you do HELOC or refinance things in advance? Uh, we do both of them. We can do a rate and term refinance, um, which most people are probably not going to get at the moment. Uh, just because of interest rates where they're at. We also do a cash out refinance if you're looking for that. Um, same thing, streamlines with FHA, uh, USDA, and VA. Um, and then we also do have a HELOC as well. Uh, Isaac said, how do you calculate property taxes on a loan application? Um, I live in El Paso. Taxes are brutal at 3%, but properties are not always appraised at market value. Um, on your loan application, just you can just estimate taxes. Uh, it's not your job to estimate property taxes. Your loan officer will be able to help you with that. So don't feel pressured there. Um, Lou, are there any additional fees when buying a new build home using their lender as opposed to buying a traditional previously lived in home? You want to take that, Dan? 
every lender is going to have their own their own cost structure. They're going to have maybe, you know, an underwriting fee, a processing fee, an admin fee. They'll, they'll add a bunch of, most of the time, if it's not a discount, if you're not paying a discount point, it's more of a profit margin for the lender. So when you're working with the builders, the builder's preferred lender, in most cases, that builder owns a big portion of that lender. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, uh, but it works out right now for a lot of people that are buying new construction. It's the way to go. Because the lenders, the builder's lender right now is giving the farm away because they want to sell these houses. So on the mortgage side, they have no mortgage business. And then on the builder side, for a while, they had nobody buying. And now the activity is starting to come back up. So, and they're, so they're trying to dig out of the hole. So right now, they're the preferred mortgage lender for the builders are doing fantastic jobs. But here's what you got to watch for. They'll give you a credit of, let's say, $5,000. But pay attention to make sure they're not charging you $5,000 in those junk fees that I was talking about, because basically they're just, it's a ledger entry for them. They're giving you a credit here, but they're charging it back to you right up there. So that's when you've got to start looking at those pieces of the puzzle along with the rate. And that's something to, we have a, we have a free estimate that will provide this for you. You can download your loan estimate into our website. We can analyze it and get right back with you. Um, let's see, can a loan officer approve their self to buy their own home? Um, no, you can't be a loan officer on your own transaction. That is not allowed. Destiny, um, how do I rebuild my credit after a charge off? The goal is home ownership in the next year. Um, do you have any, Dan, do you have any, uh, strategies there other than just like general credit tips? No, I mean, I would use you know, I don't know how, how deep that hole is, but I mean, a good way to start, I don't know about you, but I would go with smart credit. I mean, they can go in there, pull the credit. It gives you a lot. I was actually in mine today, just looking at some things. My credit score dropped because I just got hit a, a charge and like right at the day, my something came, you know, my scores went out, but um, you know, there's a, there might be a smart credit link down below. It's a monthly service. Go on there. You got, I think it's 30 days free. Try it out. I, like I said, I just, I used it today on mine. And it'll, it'll give you all kind of hints and, and, and all kind of stuff to use uh, to really help you, you know, manage your credit and, and monitor it and, and build it. Um, is, let's see. Do you have that link down oh, there? Yeah. Okay. That is down there. It's uh, seven days for $1, I think is what it is. Okay. Uh, Sympath, uh, you said, hey, Kyle, my realtor listed inspection is limited to structural, environmental, and safety issues. Um, my realtor listed inspection is limited to structural environmental safety. Issues. Okay. In the offer that we're about to submit for a house I like, do we need to include more for the inspection? Um, that's an interesting way to write it. So it sounds like what your realtor is wanting to do is, uh, it's such a funny way to write it because <laughs> even I'm trying to sit here and think, why are they wording it this way? What, what happens sometimes with sellers is you have an inspection done and a good inspection, in my opinion, kind of almost acts like the sky is falling. Like it's a good inspection should point out all sorts of issues all the way down to like, hey, there's a small little drip leak on the faucet in the bathroom. Like that's a good inspection. It highlights those things. What sometimes sellers are afraid of is that you're going to come back to them with a laundry list of 40 things that you want changed. And it happens uh, too much. I had a friend of mine who, who did this came back from an inspection and like wanted things like caulked, like recalked. I was like, dude, you can go to Home Depot and buy caulk and do it. It's not that hard. You don't need the seller to do it. It doesn't need to be a part of the negotiation. That's what the seller can sometimes be afraid of. What your realtor is trying to do is help your seller understand that you probably don't care that much about these very tiny things that you can go to Home Depot or wherever, look up a YouTube video and fix yourself. These like things are going to cost you 10 bucks to repair. Um, the inspection itself doesn't have to be limited to those things. Normally, the way it's written by a realtor is to say, we're going to have an inspection, but the inspection requests are going to be limited to X. Uh, not that the inspection would be limited because your inspection is going to be a whole house inspection. Um, or there is going to be a dollar amount associated with where it's like, we're not going to request inspection related repairs above $2,000 or something like that, which would then limit the requests for repairs to structural, you know, those big things, Hey, the roof is caving in. Okay. That's a big deal. We need to tackle, but there being an issue with a seal around a door, 
is not something that we're going to fight about. Um, is likely what's going to happen there. So from there, it's really kind of up to you what's what's going to be comfortable. Um, if you really want the seller to fix some of those little things, just know that that clause in your contract will prevent you from uh, being able to do that. Uh, John David Thomas, new here. Uh, what should be the first steps I should take if I wanted to buy a house? Give your rules. Or David. Your, your rules. My rules? No, why they right. said David <laughs> is David... Um, on the team, officer. yeah, mortgage mm. guy. Yeah, that he makes sense. Wasn't he worked from home today. Um, okay, but yeah, you're, I, you're have, uh, I have three rules for buying a house. Uh, first rule, I need to start writing these down because in my head sometimes I'm like, wait, what were they? Like just, from, the, from like the ticker, here's Kyle's rule. I need to pull those up. I need to make a website, Kyle'sRules.com. Don't nobody dare go buy that. Um, okay. So the first thing is that you're going to buy a, a home that's going to be comfortably in your budget. A lot of people want to give kind of rules of thumb, like percentages, and that's fine, but percentages aren't really a good indicator of your budget. I'm talking about, you need to sit down, see the money that's coming in, write it down on paper, take all your expenses, write them down on paper, see how much money you have left over. Um, your rent that you current pay is currently pay is a good indication of where your budget's at. Does rent right now feel tight? Okay. Don't get a mortgage. That's more than your rent. Does it feel like you have a ton of extra cash left over? Okay, maybe you have more wiggle room. Only you can determine what is going to be comfortable in your budget. So you need to land on a comfortable monthly payment number and don't stay away from that. Um, so like, don't allow your payment to go higher. If you get, you know, talk to your loan officer. I need to stay. This is my maximum monthly payment. I cannot go above this. Um, so you need to have a comfortable monthly payment. Number two is you need to be planning to buy um, for around or staying in your home for over five years. Um, and the reason it's five years is because historically, anytime there's been a dip in national housing values, those come back over five years. Okay. So even before the 2008 crash, if you bought all the way at the height, it dipped down within six years, it evened out. So you did not lose any money in that time period, even if you had terrible timing in the market. So, and that's happened uh, the other two times there's been a dip in national home values. It's only been three years. So if you're planning on staying in the home for five years or more, you statistically are going to be okay. Um, and then third is to have an emergency fund uh, of all of your living expenses, three to six months. So an emergency fund is like, if it's going to cost me mortgage included, my groceries, gas, electric, all of my utilities, everything that I spend money on monthly, if that costs me three thousand dollars per month for some people it's ten for some people it's five that number is going to be up to you if it's three thousand dollars per month and i want a three-month emergency savings um after i buy my house after i pay my down payment and closing costs i need to have three months of an emergency fund still in my account that's going to help provide some cushion so you don't feel like all of your money got taken away when you bought a house um because unfortunately a lot of people buy a house and they wipe out all of their money uh, which is a bad spot to be in moving into a house and now being responsible for the bills, uh, you know, that come with it or the repairs and maintenance. So if you follow those three rules, you'll be able to comfortably buy in any market. Um, there's still going to be stuff that happens outside of you that you can't control, but that's the whole point of these rules is recognizing I can control all three of those things. Um, what I can't control is what's happening in the market. And that's going to put you in a really comfortable spot if you stay uh, in line with those three. So if he if he's in line with those three, what would you suggest he do? Um, if you have those three uh, nailed down, then the next best step would be to get pre-approved. Um, so you can go to winthehouseyoulove.com and talk with a mortgage advisor on our team. And the whole goal there is just to get the ball rolling. Um, you're welcome to ask any questions that you have. Uh, we can help you get pre-approved and take a look at some numbers based on the monthly payment that you're looking for or that you want to stay under. That way you can move forward with a solid plan. Otherwise, uh, it's a lot of just kind of guessing if you're not at that pre-approval stage yet. You really wanna have that pre-approval in hand. That way when you're ready to buy a house, you can actually make an offer uh, with a realtor. Yeah, and there's no realtor gonna take you out without a pre-approval, so. Look who it is, Dan. Who is that? That guy, Rye. That guy, <laughs> What's up, and welcome back. Give, but just ask questions. I appreciate it. Uh, super too. 
said, uh, hey, brothers, I haven't, f ha haven't been on the loop lately. Are you seeing an increase in two to four door loans? Um, so the, the loan level price adjustment change uh, does include an increase in interest rate for multifamily homes. Um, so those interest rates are higher on multifamily. If that's a, if, is that what he means? What, is, what did he ask? Or maybe Are you seeing an there... increase in two to four door loans, or does he just mean like an increase in oh, like more demand? More people buying multi units. Yeah, you know uh... what? I don't. Right now, this is still mostly single family. There's a lot. Put it this way: most of the first time consultations that I do, um, probably half the people are looking at multi family uh, at the beginning because they want to kind of house hack and share and all that stuff. But then it seems like mostly everybody comes back with a single family home. So I don't know if they get out there and they just realize, well, the prices are double. So even with the rent, I'm still paying so you know, the same amount. Of I don't know, but yeah, it seems like we're, we're closing mostly uh, single families and condos. Uh, but again, the consultations, are, there are a lot of multi-units. Yeah. Yeah. My multifamily is so competitive because you're up against investors too, even more so than you are in the single family space. It's just so tough. Yeah. Uh, Dylan said, neither of you have owned a house. <laughs> Dan and I both own a house. Um, yeah. Uh, Jordan. Yeah. This is Dan's. See Dan's uh, penthouse back there. <laughs> why, why are the comments? What's the thing that's. You own a house. I don't get it. Did I miss something? I don't, I honestly don't, I don't either. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, what's the spinning thing? Is it like a fan? Behind yeah, you. I'm kind of hot in here right now. It's, it's April. Oh, oh. You know, on May. My well, I don't see your hair blowing up. in the breeze. My windows are fogging up. So I had to blow the fan up there to bun fog. Do they let you uh, roll down those windows? Yeah. I'm all the way at the top, so I can do whatever I want. Oh, the person was responding to somebody else. You know, there's okay, people mind, here sorry. that's going to believe us. Guys, it's just like a, it's a pretty cool screensaver, but it's like a, it's my TV, actually. <laughs> I'll give it away. Um, Let's see. Jordan, uh, at what stage do you recommend we talk to a loan officer? We're still building credit, but my score is currently at a 640 and we want to buy um, in at least a year or two. Should I involve, involve them now or wait? Um, what do you think, Dan? I, I wouldn't involve the loan officer at this point. Just monitor your credit. Here, just the rule of thumbs you, to work off of. Try to get your credit scores up as high as you can, obviously. You know, everybody's going to say, oh, get it up to you. You can get to 800 way. You probably can't. Use a system that, you, that can help you get your credit scores and just thrive to get to 700 and then 740 and then 750 and, and go that way. Put as much money as you can away. Try to budget. Try to manage all that stuff. And then if as long as your credit scores are in the mid six, upper 600s, you got some money in the bank, pay off those high interest debt, debts that you have and just be prepared. And then about you know two, three months before you want to start looking, really looking to buy, then get, a more, get us involved and we'd love to help you and, and go from there. Um. Desiree, I live in California and I own my home. It's worth uh, 700000 I have about 200000 in equity. What's the best way for me to get into my forever home and rent my home out with the prices and interest rates? So you absolutely can do this. Super common uh, strategy. Um, some people call this house hacking. House hacking involves like multiple different strategies underneath it. And it's basically like, hey, I bought my primary home and now I'm going to rent it out and buy another primary home perfectly fine to do. Um, it's likely that you do not want to cash out equity from your current home because I am, imagine your interest rate right now on your current home is pretty nice compared to market rates and you don't want to refinance to a higher interest rate is what I'm assuming. So in that case, you might be looking at something like a home equity line of credit to help pull some equity out for a new down payment on a primary residence. Um, so that's something that you can do if you are needing that cash for it. Uh, so with a conventional loan, you can buy a new home with a minimum of 5% down um, if that's something that you want to do. And we can actually use, uh, if you have a lease agreement on your home um, or you have one signed, we can actually use that 75% of that rental income to offset your mortgage payment to help you qualify. Um, because you'll have to qualify with both mortgage payments in your debt to income ratio. And for a lot of people that just completely excludes them from being able to have two homes. But since one of them is going to be providing income, um, we can help you use that income to offset uh, that mortgage payment in your debt to income ratio. Um, so really, 
it's as far as like the process of it, it's not complicated. I think sometimes pe people feel like there's a little complexity in there and I promise you it's not complicated. Uh, if you can find a tenant for your home, get that executed. We can use that rental income or the projected rental income. You'll be able to search for a new house and we can do that all with a pre-approval consultation. Um, so feel free to get scheduled for that um, or book a time uh, whenever you're ready. Uh, Luis said between an FHA loan and USDA loan, which will give me a higher loan amount and better interest rate, um, which would you choose? Uh, higher loan amounts, definitely going to be FHA because you can do a much, much higher debt to income ratio on FHA. Um, what was the second question? Better interest rate. USDA usually has a slightly better interest rate. And I mean, like pretty negligible. <laughs> Um, which one I would I choose really depends on the situation that I'm in. Um, those are, it's hard to do which mathematical loan would I choose in your head? Uh, like I have a calculator that does this. Um, you plug in the numbers and it tells you the math on which one is right. Uh, and it's, uh, I call it the loan clarity advisor. You can get it at when the house you love.com slash advisor. Um, and it does all the math for you to decide which one is the best one for you. Um, Carlos, uh, rent to own, rent to own home, a good buy. What do you think about rent to own, Dan? You know, I never looked into that because I always, I, you know, you might be able to, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that question. I've never looked into it deep enough to see, you know, is there equity shares? Uh, is it, you know, what the contract reads, have you ever read into either, or ever looked into that? I have. And the problem with rent to own is like, it's kind of when we like when we talk about mortgage guidelines on here, there's like actual rules that pretty much everybody, every company follows uh, with rent to own. It's kind of like the Wild West, like everyone has their own different thing. So it's hard to compare. Like there's not one general program that we can talk about. Um, the only issue with it is that like I don't see them often being super great deals for home buyers. Right. That's uh, what, usually it's swayed to them but i'd love to yeah. read i'd love to read a contract i'll you know I'll, I'll make an effort to go out and do that because a report that came out today is there's more now there's more rent to own properties being built in the united states than properties being built to be sold to for people to live you know buy and live in that makes sense yeah there's more rent to, they're, they're building more of those than they are homes for you and i to buy and that was a report just posted today Kind of scary. Uh, Ivan, how much do title fees usually cost? Do you have a general rule of thumb, Dan? No. Title fees? They're all over the map. You know, if you buy in Florida, if you're buying a property down there, it is expensive. Uh, I think Boston is as well. Yeah, somebody might on here and said they were from Boston. Uh, for like, for example, then you come to Illinois, you know, all the other costs here are really expensive. But the, you know, to refinance a house, it's 800 bucks. To buy a property, it might be 2,500, three grand. Florida, you might be looking at 10,000 bucks. So it, it depends state to state. I don't even know where you'd get those calculations. Uh, no, no, wait, no, no Morales. I don't know how to say that. Uh, did you buy a house using an arm? Um, I did not. I was initially looking at an arm because the interest rate that uh, I initially was looking at was super low compared to fixed. And then they took that program away very fast, understandably so, because it was a steal, <laughs> and it's it went away before I could uh, could jump on it. Um, Sean, is there any way for a buyer to find comparable sold homes without going through an agent? Um, yeah, you can look on Zillow, look at sold homes, and look at them in a fixed price range, and um, compare them. Uh, you know, find like similar square footage home or uh, bed and bath to the home that you're looking at. Jose, I'm back. Which of you guys do I contact tomorrow for my best option? So uh, if you're looking for like a, a consultation call, um, you can go to winthehouseyoulove.com and there's a big button there to schedule um, a consult call with one of our mortgage advisors. Um, okay, True said, oh, we got a three-part question. Oh my oh. gosh, okay. Hey guys, I have a unique situation. Is it possible to perform a cash out uh, refinance on a fully paid off house, uh, first of all, yes, um, I'm in a unique situation where I'm getting private. I'm getting a private loan from family. 
Um, we want to buy the house full in cash and in two to four years take out a cash refinance. Is this possible? Um, yes, you can do that within six months. It's called delayed financing. It's very common um, to pay back some of the private loan to the family. Uh, yeah, so you don't have to do it in two to four years unless you want to. Um, also, it wouldn't be a cash out refinance if you have a loan on it. It'd be a rate and term refinance. Um, and the, the rate and term refinance would pay off the loan. So uh, you can kind of do this in multiple different ways. You could do it with like delayed financing as a strategy. You could also do a rate and term refinance um, and just immediately have that uh, paid off. Like I, I did this with a friend of mine where his dad bought the home in cash for him, gave him a loan, and then we did a rate and term refinance uh, like two weeks later. So now we use the rate and term refinance, which is cheaper than cash out to pay off the loan from his dad. Um, so he got the benefit of cash while still getting a loan and not having to do a cash out. Um, so I may be missing something in the two to four years, but you do not have to wait that long uh, to do that. Um, and thankfully too, it's a very common uh, situation. Yeah. Uh, Julius, what's the best home loan program with high student loan debt? Um, so there, it really just depends on like your situation exactly, you know, what is your monthly payment that you're on with your student loan debt? Um, and are you in some sort of income driven repayment program? So first, if you're not in any sort of income driven repayment program, I would suggest that you start looking into that. Um, I have a calculator that can show you what some of those programs would look like. Uh, if you go to win the house, you slash student, you can plug in your numbers and see what that payment could be lowered to because the lower that your student loan payment is, the easier it is to get approved for a mortgage. And so you can always enroll into an IDR program to get approved for a loan. And then you can jump out of the IDR program later if you want to. If you're like, I just want to pay it back all on my own. Cool, you can do that. But we can strategize to make it easier to get a mortgage approval. From there, once you have that number of what is your monthly payment on your student loans, we can then figure out which is going to be the best loan for you. Um, most, well, pretty much every loan allows IDR. Um, it really just depends. Are you on a $0 payment? Are you on a $100 payment? That's going to depend a slightly what we do with uh, different types of loans. Um, but uh, it's the first step is looking at what kind of IDR program are you on? Um, Lou V, my credit is around 670. I have a dispute that's currently in collections. Um, I have a dispute. You have a collection account that's currently in dispute. <laughs> uh, how does this affect being able to obtain a loan for a home? Um, well, it's a pretty easy one. You do have to wait for that. Dis you either need to stop the dispute or wait for the dispute to settle. You won't be able to buy a home mid-dispute. Um, just the way that the credit system works, when you have a dispute, it almost removes that dispute from your credit report as if it didn't exist. And it artificially uh, changes your score. Uh, after the dispute, that account comes back in. So you do need to have that dispute settled or stop the dispute to be able to uh, move forward with the pre-approval. Um, let's see. Uh, I, Rakesh said, would you recommend a seven-year arm over a 30-year fix today? Um, thought process is rates will go down in the future because of a recession so I can refinance later. Dan, what do you think? The thought, the second part of that was he would take the arm and refinance later. Um, fixed. It's a, they said, would you recommend a seven year arm over a 30 year fixed thought process is rates will go down in the future because of a recession. So I can refinance later. That's what I would do. I, I like kind of being in control. What I don't like about the adjustable rate mortgages aren't, they're not bad. I just, I'm the proponent. I'm, I like knowing what my payment's going to be. Um, and then if, if, and when rates come down, I can refinance, you know, the same thing's going to happen with your arm, but today's arm, well, let me rephrase that. If today's arm was 2% lower or 1% lower than the 30 year fixed, yeah, I might contemplate that. But if you look at, at the rates today, especially on mortgage news daily, fixed rates are actually lower than adjustable rates or, you know, right there. So why even take the risk? of, you know, let's say down the road, the rates don't go down and go up. Well, you risk it here. 
you know, you, you get my point. You can refinance this, but you, you know it'll never go up or down unless you refinance it. And I think you'll get a good opportunity in about a year or so to do that. Yeah. Where are like 7-1 arm rates right now compared they're, to 30-year fixed? They're like, eight, they're like an eighth higher than the 30-year fixed. Now, that's according to Mortgage News Daily. I, mm. well, honestly, we don't – I don't know of any arms we've done. We might have done one or two this year, believe it or not, because um, of variance. Mr. Mc, McRae, I think, uh, can you touch on the new Biden administration mortgage changes and um, what effects it will have on housing? So I have a video coming out on this probably tomorrow. Um, and Dan, is your video out yet? Came out yet, yeah, two o'clock today. Okay, sweet. Go check out Dan's video um, and that will help out. Uh, Ricky, you said, is it possible that a low income disabled social security person uh, to get a home loan in California. Um, I, I've done a lot of loans for people who are on social security. I love doing them because social security income is so easy to, uh, underwrite. Like it's so, so great. I love it. It's consistent. It's easy to document compared to people who are on like commission or hourly or overtime. Um, yes, absolutely possible to buy a home in California. It depends on where we're talking about in California. Um, obviously it has to fit within your budget. Um, sometimes and I, I don't want, I'm not calling you out Ricky, but sometimes what I do see happen is people say, uh, I make $50,000 per year. I want to be able to buy this $800,000 home. Why isn't it working? Well, you, you won't be able to afford the monthly payment. And so I think first we need to look at like, what is your budget for a home? And then start looking in areas, uh, that your budget would work well in. So like how much do you get? in social security and then also what's your budget right now what does your lifestyle look like and what's a comfortable payment for you then we can start taking a look at what areas uh would that work well in because california is not cheap yeah um jeff said when will i know is the right time to refinance there's there's multiple things i would look at if the rate went down at half a percent um, look at the numbers and Kyle has calculators on his website. I have calculators on my website. Uh, there we have refinance calculators. Just go in there and see when your break even point is put in your total costs for the refinance, put in like two grand, just that, that should be on the high end and just see when the break even point is the old rule of thumb used to be, you have to decline your rate or reduce your rate one full percent for it to make sense. It doesn't hold water in today's markets because, I mean, you have people with seven, eight hundred thousand dollar homes, normal homes. You know, hate to say it that way, in most parts of this country, that a, a half a percent rate reduction could save them some money. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Can I negotiate less escrow money? Uh, Lender estimated three months of property taxes, insurance. You cannot. Okay. You want to doubt? Okay. All right. Um, you cannot negotiate less escrow money. Uh, it's all just based on like different formulas. Um, you can waive the escrow account if you put 20% down. Um, a while ago, there was a lender that used to do it at, what was it? I think five. Yeah. 5% on conventional, but I don't know that that exists anymore. Are you aware of that existing? No, I don't the, know. Only thing, and a lot of people don't know this, you can waive uh, an escrow account on a VA loan at 0% down, um, as long as the lender allows it. But uh, all other loans right now are, well, conventional is 20%. FHA, you can't remove it. USDA, you can't remove it. And it, it, there's a formula that it, that's basically throughout the whole industry that determines that number. So what they're holding is what every person that closed that day in the whole country basically almost held well, in your region. Yeah. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Well, now we've got cat hair all over this microphone. Um, is it necessary to buy points if by the end of the year we see interest rates as low as 5% or do you not foresee interest rates that low by the end of the year? I think it's so dumb to buy points above 1%. Well, maybe that's not fair. Maybe dumb isn't fair. I, it just doesn't make sense, um, especially with where we're at right now and how high inflation is. Um, when inflation does come down, we will see interest rates lower to probably around mid 5%. Um, when that's going to happen, nobody knows. <laughs> uh, 
but it looks like we're getting closer to things. Um, well, inflation has already come down a touch, uh, right, Dan? Yeah, and if th this is the argument that you know, I'm, I'm getting those blasts on my YouTubes again, where I'm an idiot, where I'm saying, well, inflation isn't as high as everybody thinks right now because the the biggest piece of this, I'll just do it real quick. The shelter piece of that equation in in the in the inflation numbers, it, it's 33 percent of the number is shelter. The data that the Federal Reserve's using is about six months old. If they use current data, so we see the rents, rent reports came out the other day and rents are now down 8% year over year. So if you factor that into this, this, the CPI, which is the inflation numbers, you're going to come up with an inflation rate of around 3% right now. So we're really close to where that needs to be. And once all this other stuff comes into effect, you'll see by Q3 this year, it will be right in line to where the Fed wants it or where it might be worse. Um, let's see, veteran that's good mortgage. for mortgage rates. Put it that way, because yeah. if all this happens, is you're going to see mortgage rates drop. Uh, veteran mortgage mentor said, "Can you do a HELOC? Can you do a HELOC to a high loan to value up to ninety to ninety five percent? Are you aware of any HELOCs that go that high right now? Um, but has a higher DTI, maybe sixty percent, in order to pay off unsecured debt. Ninety five, uh, ninety five CLTV at a sixty L debt ratio." No HELOCs that I'm aware of care about what you use the money for. So paying off the unsecured debt's not that big of a deal. Um, the higher DTI and the high LTV is just something I'm not familiar with a program that could do that. Uh, you said I have a homeowner with too much unsecured debt and a VA loan at 275, currently at about 85% LTV. I cannot do HELOCs. Oh, he can do mm. that's a toughie. He can re you know refinance his VA cat hundred percent cash out, pay off everything. That might make sense based on how much debt he has. Yeah. I would I would suggest is uh MBS Highway has a debt consolidation calculator. I would run that because if he could do a cash out, it, it really just depends how what's the debt. Are we talking like thirty thousand dollars in credit cards? Are we talking like I don't know, ten grand of an installment loan? Like what is the debt exactly? Like Dan mentioned, it, it could make sense to do a debt consolidation uh, cash out um, so that that calculator runs the whole thing and can show you exactly if it's right for your client or not. Uh, Let us see. Many lenders ask about combining the pre-approval process and underwriting or ask me about combining the pre-approval process and underwriting. If we go ahead with the underwriting process, can we change our late, change our lender later on without incurring any fees. Um, yes, you legally can change your lender at any point um, up until you obviously sign at the closing table for the final documents. Um, the only stipulation with that being like, you, if you change your lender the day before closing, you're not going to meet your closing deadline. <laughs> so you're, it's going to take that new lender probably two weeks, maybe a little bit faster to get everything all squared away. Um, with a new file. So just keep that in mind that you still have to meet your contract date. Uh, as far as fees, most of the time is going to be no. There are some lenders out there who do charge upfront, uh, like an application fee or something like that. Um, maybe just something to ask, but most lenders don't do that. Uh, Rakesh said, the seven-year arm I got quoted is 0.625% uh, lower than the 30-year. I think it's a big enough difference to go with the arm. Uh, thoughts. Thanks. You want to take that, Dan? Yeah, go for it. If that's what you're comfortable with. Uh, I mean, it, right now you're starting out, you know, lower than the 30 year fixed. And then hopefully, you know, it, your break even point, you're probably not going to see a break even point on the fixed until the latter part of this year. So that means, you know, you have some leeway and then, you know, you'll probably float down with it. So you're, the, the good thing is you'll be floating down with it. Just, just check at some point, would it make sense? Is the you know 20-year rate lower than where you would be on the arms and so forth? But right now, you know if you're getting 0.625 off of the, you know, the fixed rate, that's a big enough spread most likely. It, well, if it's an $80,000 loan, I wouldn't take the risk. If it's a $500,000 loan, that's a big enough money that I, I would probably make that move. Yeah. Uh, Mahedi said, is the... Here's the golden question, Dan. 
is the mortgage interest rate. Will the interest rates go down by the end of this year? We're going to hold you to it. Tell us. They might. That wasn't confident. I need a confident answer like you know the future. Absolutely, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, anybody that tells you they know, no, we don't know. You know, my my educational guess, my my hypothesis, is yeah. And it, but there's a lot of things involved. You know, most likely we're going to hit a recession. Okay, what happens in a recession? In the last five recessions, rates dropped 1.8 percent, and a big piece of that was the Fed overshot. So if you take that from where we are, but there's other factors involved, we're probably looking at rates in the high fives. So, it, you know, yeah. for the next year or so, eventually, that's what should happen on the technicals. Now, is there going to be a World War Three? All bets off. You know, is there going to be, you know, so, you know, there's events that can take place. It's just like, whoa, you know, like those. You bank heard it here first. Dan is personally declaring war. Yeah. Against, against a whole list of countries, undisclosed countries at the moment. Uh, <laughs> and that's, you know, you go, you have these people just building their channels on the world's ending or the this and that. And it's just like, guys, it's not whatever. It's, you know, just, you don't know. And, you know, all the, all the people that were doom and gloom on the housing crash yesterday, the case Schiller index comes out and house prices are going back up again. Go figure. Yeah. That's an interesting one. Um, me, the username me says, do you work in California on USDA loans? Uh, we certainly do, which is a perfect tee up into, we work in all 50 States. Um, so we have a team of mortgage advisors who'd be happy to help you. You can go to win the house you love.com. We offer a free pre-approval consultation call. So we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, you also asked what kind of, you know, if we do USDA loans, we do conventional, uh, USDA. FHA, VA, the most common. We still do uh, jumbo loans. We have two or three Ks. Um, pretty much anything that you're familiar with, we can do. Um, we also have down payment assistance programs as well. Um, we also work in Maryland. Yes, all 50 states. So we work nationally. Um, we would be happy to help you out. Um, so you can contact us. Uh, we do these live streams every single week. Uh, same time, same place, 8 p.m. Eastern, um, both on my channel and Dan's channel, uh, The Rate Update with Dan Frio. Um, and so what you can do is go to win the schedule a call for a time that works for you to ask any questions or get started on that next step for a pre-approval. If you have questions in the meantime, um, my, I'll put my email in the, um, chat, uh, Ricky, you said American Indian loans. Those are going to be best. Uh, I think directly through HUD, um, or a local housing agency for, uh, the, oh my goodness. Section 184, is that what they are? Go to tribal lending. Just just Google tribal lending. The first one that comes up is, I think, tribal lending. Call them. Fantastic. Um, so then I have, you're Dan at the rateupdate.com, right? Yep. Sweet. Uh, now I'm like second guessing myself on your email. How many times email? a day? Huh? How many times a day you email me? A hundred? I know. It's a, it's a I just type in Dan and it comes right up. <laughs> Don't ask me what your phone number is. I have no clue. I know. Um, okay. <laughs> Shell, you did have a super chat in here. You said, can you tell me about Keystone Flex and Kit loan? Do you know what that is? Mm -mm. Keystone Keystone Flex Keystone and Kit loan. Keystone Flex. Kit. AI. Um, that looks like it's something specifically through Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. So you'd want to ask them. Um, specifically about their program because I do not know. I was going to say um, that an acronym for something, I thought. No. Yeah, it was through uh, uh, Pennsylvania uh, HFA. Um, cool. Well, thank you all. Feel free to email us if you have questions or schedule a call if you want to move forward to the pre-approval. We will be doing this again next week. Um, and until then, have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you